I want to show you something I've spent a whole week on. You may think this is crazy, but basically what I have here is a computer that's just um, emulating the Holly um, engine management computer, the ECU, and it's just allowing me to program in a, 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 um, a pulse width modulated output using this um, little interface. And I basically built a circuit, and what it does is it uh, takes the pulse width output from the computer and turns it into an analog um, output. You know, these computers have lots of inputs um, that are analog, 0 to 5 volts, 0 to 20 volts, that kind of stuff. That it will do analog to digital conversion on, but nothing to go the other way. So the closest you can get on these computers if you want to do some type of analog control is to use a pulse width modulated output and use a little circuit like this. That basically the signal is you just low pass filter it if you're an engineer or a technician you'll understand just a resistor capacitor network and uh, into some op amps and a bunch of fancy circuitry and basically I've got a circuit now that um, allows me to control the battery voltage um, or the output of the alternator and the reason why that's important is because I have a lithium battery now and guess what if you charge it up to 14 and a half volts continuously let it sit up there, you'll wreck it. Um, that's sort of a dirty little secret with all of these uh, lithium um, batteries um, is that um, they don't like anything above around 13.7, 13.8 volts. Um, their internal charge, um, the, the cells are fully charged at 3.3 volts each, so multiply by 4 and you're at 13.6. Uh, 13.7, uh, 13.8 would be reasonable. Anything above 14 and you're starting to really hurt the battery if you let the alternator sit there. What it, you know, normal vehicle alternators will, will run up to 15 volts or 14 and a half volts typically. So I'll show you what this thing does. So right now I'm showing that I'm able to tell the alternator that the system is at 13.4 volts, for instance. Okay, so the alternator is going to try to charge it to 14.4. So the voltage sense wire on the alternator goes, oh, I need to get it up to 14.4. And so it'll, it'll, um, it'll, it'll keep pushing the voltage up higher. But what I'm doing is I'm saying when the voltage is only at 13.8, I want to tell the alternator it's at 14.4. So, you know, that sounds weird, but basically I, if I put a 75% duty cycle into this thing, you'll notice that it'll start climbing, this, this voltage will start climbing. And I'm able to use the computer. The reason why it's climbing slowly is because I'm low-pass filtering it. And I don't want a lot of noise and other things to get in there and start mucking. So it takes a little while to get up there. I can change the speed by just changing the amount of resistance and capacitance. But basically, it's moving up to 14.5 volts. So what it's now saying to the alternator is, listen, you're at 14.5 volts, back off. And this works perfectly. In fact, I tested this in the car yesterday. And um, I'm able to get the alternator to stick out 13.8 by telling it that it's at 14.5 volts. So this circuit, this little circuit with a bunch of resistors, capacitors, and um, op amps is basically, oh, plus this guy here, and all this is, is a uh, charge pump, so it takes 12 volts in and it's sticking 17 out, and I need the extra voltage to, to run this little circuit so it'll stick out up to 15 volts. So there we go, I can modify this thing at will and uh, the computer now can absolutely take charge of the alternator and uh, there I'm setting it back down to 13 and a half so the alternator can now control um, sorry the computer control the alternator voltage and I can keep the charging voltage safe so I can tell it that uh, it needs to charge fast and then when I see the thing get up to 13.8 volts I can back it off and uh, save the uh, lithium-ion battery from being baked. And in fact, lead-acid batteries don't like being at 14.5 volts continuously. They'll charge well for a little while up there, but they're um, for medium term, you want 13.8 volts in a lead-acid battery, and for long term, if you're going to let it trickle charge, or what they call float charge, you only want it at about 13.5. So you look at any you know, float chargers, they will sit there at 13.5 volts all day long, um, but uh, with a car, because you're charging and discharging all the time, they just simplify it. And I think it's stupid that uh, computer-controlled cars wouldn't have a circuit that says, back it off a little bit, save the battery. But what they're saying is, hey, your battery's only going to get four or five years, and then you're going to have to toss it out. 
and uh, you don't want to do that with a regular lead acid battery and you don't want to do it certainly with a lithium battery that costs 1200 bucks so the idea that I've got here I may productize at some point and uh, get it into um, get it into um, production for all these guys that want to swap in high-tech uh, lithium-ion batteries uh, the uh, the iron sulfate or the iron oxide versions um, and there's about eight manufacturers that make them this little circuit here um, I didn't make this this is from Texas Instruments and basically this allows me um, to use the little um, shunt I have a 200 amp 75 millivolt shunt for the battery and this detects the current flowing in and out of the battery and with a bunch of modifications I'm making it's going to stick out two and a half volts when there's no current in or out and then if there's 65 amps flowing into the battery I get zero volts and if there's 65 amps flowing out of the battery I get uh, five volts so I can take this stick it into um, the uh, zero to five volt input on the ECU and now I can have a nice digital gauge that shows me the battery charge discharge um, and so I not only have the ability to control the charging but I also have the ability to monitor it and um, these two things create a lot of flexibility and power so a lot of work but I'm in this mode now of getting electronics all sorted and uh, so this is how I'm wasting the last uh, week and a half of my time and I'm going to show you the headliner I got from SMS in a second hang so this is the headliner material that SMS has and it's nice it's, it's um, about uh, 3 sixteenths or maybe a little more than an eighth inch foam backing um, and this is the exact midnight blue uh, headliner material that um, totally matches the original headliner material here. So I'm rocking and rolling. I can uh, work on the headliner pretty soon, but I'm trying to get the dash in. Can't get the dash in until the electronics is finished being wired, so I'm thrashing away on all this stuff.